Okay, so I'm just downloading OpenFide on my Raspberry Pi 5B because it's just had an update. Now, if you don't know what OpenFide is, it's basically Chrome OS, but it's open source, so it's available on loads of different devices. And the one thing that's been added in this recent update is it now supports Android 11. Uh, and basically that means that we can install Android apps. So we've got the really nice side of Chrome OS with the full desktop browser and a really nice lightweight operating system, but we can also install Android apps on it as well. So I'm just downloading the file, which is this one here. Uh, but unfortunately it's not like the normal file that you download. So if we go back to R102, this file is an image file, which just means it can be written to an SD card and put straight in your orange Pi. But with this version and the previous version, we need to run the file to create the image. So I think it's probably downloaded by now. It has orange pie open fide r108 r1.run. So we show it in folder. And then if we right click and open in terminal, I'm hoping this works, I haven't tried this yet. And we want to put this in chmod plus x and then the name of the file and then I think this is the next way to do it if you're putting it on an NVMe drive you need to put NVMe at the end uh, which is in the instructions but I'm going to try it just for an SD card so put nothing on the end and hopefully this will create the file definitely doing something and if we have a look at the instructions back here so it says chmod plus x the file and run the file depending on your target storage type. Uh, so you can see dash dash boot NVMe and dash dash boot SATA. And it looks like we can flash the card with uh, Belena Etcher or I've got Raspberry Pi Imager on here. So let's go back to the terminal and see if something's happening. Still probably happening because it hasn't gone on to the next line yet. So I'll come back in a minute when hopefully it will be done. Okay, so that's all finished. Hopefully it works. Now will it show up, here you can see there's these extra partitions are created here. Uh, there's usually loads with Chrome OS, but I'm not sure if it does it after you started it the first time. So I'm going to shut this down. And this is designed for the Raspberry Pi 5, but as I've got it in a Pi 5B, I'm going to see if it boots. I have got an OS on the EMMC drive, so let's just give it a go, see what happens. Okay, so I need to switch on, and this is booting up. I think it's going to probably boot from the MMC drive because this OS is for Orange Pi 5, not Orange Pi 5B, but I figured I'd give it a try as it was already in there. Something's booting. Oh, it is booting open. Oh, wow. So this is Open Fide working on the Orange Pi 5B, which I wasn't expecting it to boot. And we're in. Well, that's interesting. So it's given me the option to install OpenFide, convert this device into an OpenFide device, uh, or try it first. So you can use it, you can run it from the SD card that's in there. Uh, but I'm going to see what happens if I try and install it. Is it going to want to install it on the EMMC drive or another drive, or is it going to install it on the SD card that's in there? Let's see what happens. So next will overwrite all data on your device before starting make sure you have a backup okay well I can reflash uh, Ubuntu if it does overwrite Ubuntu so let's see what happens install open file install open file and erase hard drive install couldn't complete make sure your device contains working internal storage such as HD SSD or EMMC drive well, it has got an EMMC built in. It is greater than 16 gig. It's almost like the installer is like uh, an x86 or an x64, like a desktop or a laptop uh, edition. So can I go back? No, I'm going to have to reboot. I'm just going to do the try OS to see what happens. What's this one? Restart. OK, so it's starting up again. At least it starts very quickly. So let's hit get started and try it first. Okay, so if I do it this way, it's just going to run the OS from the SD card. So that'll probably be all right, actually. Uh, I'll sign in with a Google account. Always good to have two-factor authentication on your Google account. So I'll say, yes, it's me on my iPad. 
go with the auto theme. Okay, and we're in. So let's try and download something like the Aptide Store. So we'll download an APK and see what happens. So the APK is here. Download the APK to your computer and save. So only 18 megabytes look pretty small. Show in folder. And what happens if I oh, package installer? So this doesn't show up normally in OpenFide. Uh, FideOS has the Google Play Store, but you pay for FideOS uh, and other things and updates and things like that. OpenFide is the free one, uh, all open source. So let's try package installer. There's a problem passing the package. Just double click it again. Okay, not a good start. See if there's anything in settings about Android. Can't see anything else there, so I think I'm gonna download another APK. Uh, so let's go to, back to the browser, and let's try APK Pure. And let's download that, and let's double click that. Okay, I'm gonna restart and try again. Okay, let's try that again. So go to the downloads folder. Let's try out Tide again. Oh, okay, so now it's allowing me to install it. So let's hit install. And open. Oh, it's a resizable Android app. So let's go full screen. And oh, then we can't see the skip bit. So let's go back and skip. Now if we go full screen. Let's just try one thing just to see if we can get something installed. So let's go search and try the Edge browser, which is here. And let's install that. Would you like to allow auto install after app download? Okay. Allow access and allow. Ah, this works brilliantly. So this is something you can't do in Chrome OS Flex, which is the one that you would download from Google to be able to use Chrome OS on a different device. But uh, OpenFide now gives you the option, only on certain platforms, it's not on all platforms. I really wanted to do this video on a Raspberry Pi 4, um, but uh, unfortunately it's not there yet. It has this version of the update, but it doesn't have the Android app support. Okay, so install and open. Okay, it looks very much like a phone app. Uh, so let's go full screen on that. And oh, do we still get this thing where it miss? Yeah, so sign in later. Look, it misses off the very bottom of the screen. It's probably something I can do about that in settings. So confirm. Not now. It's funny because it's in a phone size but you can see that it's not entirely fitting on there. But if I resize it, and let's do a search for BBC Sport, BBC Sporty. Oh, what's happened? BBC Sport Football. Okay, it's a bit transparent. Okay, so the first app wasn't necessarily a success. So let's try the Brave browser. It all, it all feels nice and fast, even though it's coming off an SD card. Uh, here we go. This looks like it's handling it a bit better than Edge. Everybody wants to be my default browser. So, BBC Sport. Oh. That's also, well let's close the app, app tied down, close down settings. Yeah, it's got some weird thing with transparency, hasn't it? Okay, so web browsers are out. Oh, but it shows that all right. So if I launch Amazon, let's try one more thing. Uh, if I go back to the app tied store, which should be down here. Yeah, there it is. 
I can have a look at the GitHub and see if there's any other ways of doing it, but I just uh, was excited to get it working and I figured if I showed the method of getting it working, other people can install Android apps and let me know what they had success with. Let's go for games, Minecraft trial, and install. 795 megabytes, I'll come back in a minute. Okay, so that's finished downloading, let's hit install. And open. I plugged in a controller, although controller support can be a bit sketchy in Chromebooks. Uh, so let's hit play. And yeah, we still get this a little bit chopped off. So I think what I'm going to do to be able to cope with that is try this. Oh, it doesn't give me, oh, it doesn't quite give me everything that I need it to be. Oh, what a shame. Uh, game. No, multiplayer, create, oh, create here. Joystick and tap to interact. Looks like it's a touch screen game, does it? Proceed. Loading pretty quick. And so it looks like I've, yeah, I've got the joystick here. There. Oh, but it, it moves all right. So if we had proper joystick support, there's nothing wrong with the way it's moving. It's a bit of a weird environment for, uh, there's not a lot of things I can run on, but you can see that looks pretty decent. Let's try and get up high. And move around. Yeah, that, I'm impressed with that. Very, very good. Didn't expect this in OpenFide uh, to be able to have the Android app support. That is really, really good. Right, let's close that down. See if that closed down normally. It does. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it there, but I'm going to play around with it more. But yeah, let me know what you get running in this. Uh, on the Raspberry Pi 4, I had GTA San Andreas and loads of other games if you want any ideas of what sort of games will run on this. Also emulation as well. Very good in Android. So we can have Chrome OS, which I, I really like as a, as a basic, but nice user-friendly operating system. I use it at the moment on a FIDE tab, and uh, I've been using that at work quite a lot, and I really like it, really snappy. That's also using the same RK3588S processor, and it's a great experience. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.